In a previous video, we talked about some properties of Fourier transforms and set up a problem that we want to solve, namely what the heat is on a really long, essentially infinite bar described by the heat equation. Um, the initial conditions we gave were here so that the temperature is only non-zero in some region. So we want to solve this using Fourier transforms, and there's four steps to doing that. The first is we take a Fourier transform of the partial differential equation that we're interested in. So our differential equation above, we take a Fourier transform of that, so we Fourier transform du dt, and that's equal to the Fourier transform of alpha d squared u dx squared. Okay, in order to make any progress on this, then we need to use the properties of the Fourier transform itself in order to simplify our expression for the partial differential equation. So time derivatives come out of the Fourier transform, so this is du hat dt, and that's equal to minus alpha p squared u hat of p comma t. Again, we just use the notation that we turn the Fourier transform of u of x and t into u hat of p comma t, a function of p and t, where p is that Fourier transform variable. Step two, uh, we notice that this is no longer a partial differential equation anymore. It's actually an ordinary differential equation, and that's much easier to solve. So you can solve this using uh, the usual tricks that we do for solving ordinary differential equations. So for instance, just rewriting this differential equation, we obtain an ordinary differential equation, du hat dt is equal to minus alpha p squared u hat. This has a nice easy solution, u hat of p comma t is some constant c hat, which could be a function of p, e to the minus alpha p squared t. Okay, so this is in some sense the solution, but it's actually the Fourier transformed general solution and we know it's a general solution because it still has an arbitrary constant, c hat. So step three is then, what is this c hat? What is c hat of p? Uh, well, what c hat is, is it's actually the Fourier transform of the initial condition for our system. So u hat at p comma zero, which is just c hat of p, plugging it into our solution above, is the Fourier transform of u at x comma zero. So what we really need to do is Fourier transform our initial condition. Recall what our initial conditions were. Our initial conditions were that the uh, initial temperature was only non-zero between negative a and a, where it was u naught. So writing that as a piecewise defined function, this looks like u naught between negative a and a, and zero otherwise. So what we need to do is we need to Fourier transform this initial condition. So we take one over root pi, negative infinity to infinity, u at x comma zero, e to the i px dx. And so we have to take the Fourier transform of this step function. Well, the Fourier transform of a step function is something that's kind of well known. I'll just skip the steps and quote the result. It's sine of p times a over pi times p. So this is the Fourier transform of the initial condition. And by extension, then, this is c hat, that unknown constant. So plugging this into our Fourier transform solution above, we now have the solution whether it's in the Fourier transform, but still a solution, u hat of p comma t is sine of p times a over pi p e to the minus alpha p squared times t. Okay, so this is the solution, but it's not a solution in space and time. So what we need to do is we need to inverse Fourier transform our solution back so that our solution is a function of x and t. So u of x and t is then the inverse Fourier transform, so that's the negative infinity to infinity integral of u hat of p comma t e to the i px dp. Now we're integrating over p, notice. So we need to plug this into u hat, and so we do that, and we get an expression for the inverse Fourier transform, which looks something like this, e to the minus alpha p squared t, e to the i px dp. 
And this is pretty hard to do for the integral, but it is the general solution, or rather the specific solution, um, for the heat in the bar, or rather the temperature in the bar, as a function of time and a function of space. But it's pretty ugly, so how are we going to do this? Well, this is actually true in general. The inverse Fourier transform of our solution is going to be pretty ugly. It's going to be pretty nasty, and so it's going to be hard to work with. In particular, it's going to be hard to do something analytically with this result, to come up with an analytical answer as a function of x and t. So usually what we do is we use numerical methods and numerical approximations to try and understand this result. So let's just see what that might look like. So in Mathematica, let me define my solution as an integral. I'm going to use n integrate as a numerical approximation to integrate. Um, and so if I just do this numerical integral, there's some uh, leftover imaginary parts. If you use chop, it kills off the little imaginary parts. Um, so let's plot our function u of x comma t equal to zero, and then I'm setting the bounds, instead of negative infinity to infinity, negative 10 to 10 to make my life easier. And I plot that, and it roughly looks like my initial condition. Um, I could do better if I increased my limits on my integral. Now let me do a 3D plot of the solution as a function of x and time. So this in general takes a long time, so I'll just show you the result here. And so we see what you'd expect would happen, which is that the temperature decreases with time uh, so that the whole temperature of the bar eventually becomes zero. It's what you'd expect. Um, but here we can actually see it. And again, if you wanted more numerical accuracy, you could just extend the accuracy uh, of the numerical approximation. So that's generally how we use Fourier transforms in solving partial differential equations.